to discuss the humanitarian crisis in Gaza is Hussam Al-Lush, executive director of the Los Angeles Office of the Council of American Islamic Relations, also known as CARE. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Giselle, and good morning to your viewers. Thank you so much. So Antony Blinken made an impassioned speech this morning with Benjamin Netanyahu, making very clear the distinction between Hamas and the Palestinian people. How important is that distinction to you? Well, the, the distinction is very important, but historically speaking, this has been empty words because we, as Americans, have been at, uh, at, at the main fault in terms of supporting, fueling, funding, excusing, justifying a 75-year-old old, uh, uh, occupation with an apartheid system. And we just go and give empty words uh, to the Palestinian people. We talk about a peace process that the Palestinians have not seen at any part of that. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it will be received. Uh, it it maybe makes us feel good that at least we're not guilty as we see Israel bombarding and, and eliminating complete neighborhoods with civilians, women, children in Gaza in, in, in a very much a collective punishment tactic. So words don't mean much. I think the Palestinian people have been waiting and I think are waiting now for actions. Right now, there's a humanitarian crisis as a result. The civilians, the Palestinians in Gaza, as you say, are taking the big brunt. What concerns you most about the humanitarian crisis? There is no electricity. It's being cut off. Water is being cut off. Um, Israel says, the IDF says, until the hostages are released. Well, I, I think for me, the, the, the most shocking thing is how shocked people in America today are, as if this has just happened on Saturday. The tragedy didn't start on Saturday with, with an attack that unfortunately also hurt many civilians, even in Israel. But the, the tragedy has been going on for so long. And uh, what concerns me the most is the level, the level of dehumanization of Palestinians that I've never seen before at this level, where even a genocide now, even the killing of children is being cheered, justified, even our own president. Uh, giving Israel, uh, currently run by a fascist government, according to everybody who has commented on Israel until about a week ago, giving them a green light to go ahead and continue with an ongoing process of treating the people of Gaza as animals, as the Israeli defense minister described the people of Gaza, animals. Two million people, a majority of them are children, have nothing to do with Hamas, with PLO, with anything, children. Uh, caged in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in the most densely populated area in the world today, placed as, as prisoners, hostages, for the last 17 years as caged people, and the last 60 years plus uh, since the occupation of Gaza. Uh, this is inhumane, this is unacceptable, and unfortunately it's happening with our taxpayers' money. This does not help peace. This does not help the Israelis. It does not help the Palestinians for sure. Uh, something needs to happen to change. The um, ISIS-like tactics of the Hamas terrorists um, who are reportedly responsible for beheading children and killing families and children in kibbutzes and also civilian homes, um, this is a very complex geopolitical crisis unfolding. Um, does Hamas represent the people of Gaza, all the civilians there, or are they two victims of this horrific crisis? Well, first of all, the, the beheading uh, story has been refuted, and even the Israeli government has, has denied it. It is part of the w propaganda uh, of the war that happens on both sides, unfortunately. Uh, and we have to be careful not to fuel uh, misinformation on, on any side. But more importantly, uh, Hamas is a byproduct of an occupation. Hamas did not start the occupation. Hamas started in 1987. The occupation in Palestine started in 1948. The dispossession of the Palestinian people did not start with the PLO. The solution to this conflict is not for Hamas or the Likud or PLO to disappear, because if they disappear today, another group will come out. The solution to this ongoing conflict is one, one thing, and the occupation. This is what it is. It's about an occupation that is brutal. Uh, this is an ongoing killing of Palestinians. Where are the authors? I wasn't invited on media to talk about how Israel has been killing Palestinians every single day. For the Palestinians, every single day has been a terror, harassment, abuse, loss of land, confiscation of, uh, of land, uh, building of illegal settlements on their own land, being sieged, 
not allowed to have medicine, food, water, every single day. Where is the outrage? I know we're, it is right to be outraged when we hear about civilians being killed. Every life is valuable, Israeli, Palestinian, or any other life. But why is it that we only show that compassion and that attention when only Israeli lives are taken? Where is that compassion for Palestinians? They are also children of the same God. There are Israelis who would counter that and say that um, the Palestinians do not want Jews to have a state, the state of Israel, and they do not want Jews to exist. Um, so that is, therein lies the complexity, no? Well, the truth is there are Jews who don't want to see a single Palestinian. They say that clearly. There's no hidden. There are extremist Jews and there are extremist Palestinians, uh, but they should not be the one defining uh, what, how we move forward. Israel had a chance to you know, with, with the Oslo agreement, with the PLO agreeing to a two-state solution, which is impossible now, considering how Israel has used the Oslo agreement to expand land, taking land from Palestinians, from what was supposed to be the land for the Palestinian state. Now, every expert, every independent expert say it's impossible to have a two-state solution now. Uh, the real situation is Israel has used the excuse of some, some Palestinians saying, we don't want to agree uh, with the establishment of the state of Israel. The reality is the majority of Israelis and Palestinians at, at one point agreed to that. Uh, but honestly, having two-state solution doesn't fit the Zionist agenda. The Zi Zionist agenda has been, it's a colonial settler ideology that has been uh, uh, moving into removing Palestinians from their own homeland. It is not that difficult. Again, I make a case if we want to see peace, and I, and I hope most of us want to see peace, where Israelis, Palestinians, Muslims, Christians, and Jews live in peace and harmony the way historically they've, they've, they've done it, by ending, by pressuring Israel. Us giving Israel the green light to exterminate Palestinians, sending Israel military aid to be used again. The Palestinians don't have tanks. They don't have airplanes. They don't have fighter jets. They don't have helicopters. They don't have even a state to defend them. They don't have veto power the way Israel has. At one point, there comes a time when we say Palestinians are human beings who, like any people in the world, deserve to live free on their land. They don't need to prove anything to people to be treated with dignity, with respect, given freedom, the way Israelis, the way we Americans, the way the French, the way any people in the world deserve. Hussam, let me ask you one last question before I let you go. Um, right now, there is no safe passage for civilian Palestinians to leave Gaza. Um, perhaps, however, um, the Egypt border um, could be open. Do you see that happening? And in what way do you see that there could be um, any other nations coming in to negotiate that kind of safe passage? Well, first of all, it's the responsibility, according to international law, of the occupying power, and that is Israel. Israel controls the air, the border. Uh, uh, the livelihood of Palestinians. It is Israel's responsibility to protect the safety of citizens that it occupies. That is the Palestinian people, including those in Gaza. Complete cu cutting off of water, fuel, electricity, that constitutes war crimes. It is not anybody else's business to protect those civilians. And uh, for Israel to uh, expect that Egypt will open the border. And Egypt is complicit in that inhumane siege. So it is, Egypt doesn't get a pass. But for Israel to expect that Egypt will open the borders in order for Palestinians, again, to, to engage in another exodus, that is also ethnic cleansing. That's, that's what the Palestinians did. The majority of people in Gaza are children of those refugees who were forced out of their homes inside what today is Israel. These are people who have been trying to return to their homeland, and Israel has again and again refused to allow those refugees to go back to their territory. So by them moving to Egypt, they worry. These people worry that they will not be able to come back to Gaza. What happens is we have pushed the people of Gaza into a very difficult corner. No rights, no dignity, no hope, no peace, no future. They can't control the sea. They can't go fishing. They can't control this, the air. They can't have an airport. They can't control the border. They can't control what medicine. What happens to any people who has been r turned into animals in cages with no hope? They become hopeless. And what we witness on Saturday, as unfortunate as it is, 
is that manifestation of hopelessness that we have to end.